All right. Hello, Mark Lamondola, Alexis Sheehan, and Lauren Miller. Hello. Hi. Hi. So we are here today to talk about the Learn to Pray, Learning to Pray series um, that is going to be starting again at St. Paul's. And this is a series that you all have been uh, very involved with and participated in and, and very enthusiastic participants in it. And um, we thought that this video would be helpful to other folks who might be thinking about participating in the upcoming iteration of this series. So Mark, as the vestry person um, responsible for the Spiritual Growth Commission, um, tell us a little bit about what this program is all about, like where it came from, how did we get started with this? Sure. Um, well, uh, what we're going to have on April 17th is sort of round two of the Learning to Pray, but it did come out of just sort of bouncing ideas around in our Spiritual Growth Commission. Uh, actually, it, the idea uh, is Ted Babcox, and he put a lot of work into it. Um, and, and it really, we feel like it's an entry point for people to um, put, sort of explore prayer. Um, and what we found is that um, it really doesn't matter what, where you are in the journey, whether you're just beginning this or whether you're pretty far down the road. Uh, it's a great opportunity to uh, engage in, in prayer. Um, it's, it's an eight, nine week, we'll, we'll call it a program, but it's a commitment. Um, and, and I think you need to look at it as a journey. It's sort of uh, how do we experience God um, in our faith? um through through prayer um and, and there's different kinds of prayer and we'll ex, you know we'll sort of experiment with different kinds of prayer throughout the the eight nine weeks but that's you know that that, that just sort of enriches the experience um and nobody expects anyone to be a, a, a pro at contemplative contemplative prayer at the end of the eight nine week program it's just let's see what this looks like and let's see how it feels so with this next iteration, you said it's kind of a, 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 a you said something about kind of a second. So if, if someone has never done this before, would this still be appropriate for them to participate in? Uh, yes, it is the same program. Um, it is, um, you know, it, it's not like a 2.0. It's the same program, but we're just we're just doing it again. But there are some people. Um, like Lauren, who we're gonna gonna go through it again, um, and we I think we have a couple other repeats with the sign up so far. But so Lauren, does that mean this is you know remedial prayer? Are you having to do remedial prayer? <laughs> <laughs> I got held back. No, I, I truly, I really enjoyed the program so much the first time around. I was sorry that we had reached the end, mm -hmm. and. I always told myself that if it was offered again, that I would be one of the first to sign up because I really gained so much from being a part of that group. And um, I just enjoyed it also. It was just very enjoyable. So I'm really looking forward to it. And we broke down into smaller groups for our weekly meetings. And I feel like with different people, each meeting will be different. Each um, session will be different with different people bringing new ideas and different thoughts. Even if the material is exactly the same, uh, you know, just different perspective. So I, I think that will be really interesting also. I think that's a really important point. So this isn't like an academic program. Here's the syllabus, because we're going to learn these five things, these seven things, these 10 things. It's all about the relational connections with one another. And Alexis, do you want to say some more about that or, or you know, kind of share with us your impression of it and your engagement with it? Yeah, I, I love that perspective, Lauren. I, I agree that the relationships you know, they were most of the people in my small group were people that I knew or was familiar with. That could be different this time around, just because for the past year, we haven't been hanging out together um, as much. But it was a great opportunity to deepen those relationships and really get to know one another. Um, and I, I also really looked forward to the hour that we spent and just hearing the way that we could have the same. So the, the way that the course works is like each week you may have some prompts 
um, or a, something to explore in your time of prayer. Um, and, but the way that everyone experiences that is so different. And so when we would come back together the next week, maybe something jumped out at me and I shared, this was huge for me. And I loved this part. And somebody else would say something completely different. And so even though we had all used the same material, what we brought back to one another was really great. And then that carried into the next week, maybe something someone said inspired me to think about it a different way or come to the material in a different way. Um, so those, the, the people in the group made, made it, you know, I think if I had just been sitting alone with the material, it, first of all, I probably wouldn't have done it because that's just me. I, I really need accountability. Um, but, but it, I, I loved hearing what other people had to say. Mm -hmm. Well, and that was something that, you know, I mentioned to you all preparing for this, I put up the catechism and read what the catechism has to say about prayer, many interesting things. But one of the things I think that it stressed, I think a lot of us are like, yeah, I've been praying by myself for forever. It's fine. Um, but there is something when we think about corporate prayer and corporate worship of uniting together for this purpose that I think there's an alchemy there um, that happens. There's a relational aspect that you just don't get praying by yourself, no matter how robust of a, an individual prayer life you have. Um, so let me ask you this. If I'm somebody who is like, you know, I just joined St. Paul's in the last 15 minutes. I don't know you people. I've never been Episcopalian. I was some other denomination or I was nominally Episcopal. Like, I don't, I, I don't know if I'm there yet. Would this be good? Whoever wants Absolutely. to take it. Absolutely. I I think this is a great, um, it is, it's low stress, low pressure. Um, there, the, the read, so each week has a theme um, that sort of keeps us grounded in trying to see the scripture that we're reading through that particular theme, like, who is God? Who am I? What is my relationship to God? And, and so on. Um, and so if you're just starting out, you know, we, we, I don't like to say everybody can pray or there's no wrong way to pray. I mean, it's, uh, it's your own individual journey. I, I think, um, but it is a practice, right? We, if, the more you do it, the, not the better you get at it, but the better you feel about it. It's like any relationship. The more you put into the relationship, the, 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 the deeper it's going to be, the more enriching it's going to be. And so that's, that, that's kind of the whole idea is if you want if you want to experience uh, a deeper relationship or have a deeper faith, we feel this is a great entry point to put your toe in the water and read some scripture and talk about it. So you specific mention, specifically are mentioning scripture as a prompt. So how is this different from like a Bible study? Anybody want to dive on that one? It's a good question. Well, I'll, I'll go back to what Mark was saying earlier and to your, your question before about is, uh, is this group right for you if you know, you're having these hesitations? And I will say I had the same um, thoughts prior to starting the group before. And you know, I, I think anytime you jump into a new group, there's a, a, a bit of an intimidation, but I will say, it was um, my fears or any any hesitations I had were alleviated right away. It is it has nothing to do with how much you know about the Bible or at praying. Period. It is all about bringing your experience to the group and sharing that. And like Mark said, anybody can do that. Everybody can do that. It's very inclusive. So, um, and how it's different than a Bible study. The, the, I think Mark made a good point with the scripture being like a jumping off point. Uh, but from there, there's so much more to explore. And the scripture is just a very small part. And every week is different. So there, there may be some scripture, there may be some other material that's involved, but it really is truly uh, more to be the prompt for provoking thought and 
to take into your experience. And then that is what you share with the group. If that makes sense. <laughs> it does. I don't know well, I articulated that properly. No, that was really good. And I, I think that's important. And we also talked a little bit about, we noted that there may be some people who say, I've been doing this all my life. I have a very robust prayer practice. So what do you say to that person? What, how will this help them in their prayer practice? I do love that it encourages trying something new and continuing what you already love or the, the practices that are meaningful to you. Um, but there was a, um, I think, Reverend Cynthia Walters led, is that her name? Yes. Red, led a practice at the very beginning that used imaginative prayer. It was something I had maybe done once in college. I was certainly not a part of my routine at all, but it was just maybe a five minute practice. And it has stayed with me in a very, it really worked for me. And I was so appreciative of that. Um, so appreciative and honestly, if I got nothing else out of it, that five minutes was extraordinarily valuable to me throughout the past, you know, six, eight months since we finished the group. I've come back to that same sort of imaginative space over and over again. And it's been a really rich place for me to use. But I don't know that I'd ever really thought of it before or would have come up with it on my own necessarily. And I I do read books here and there. Nobody's talking about that in the books I read or in the Bible studies I've been a part of. So it's a little bit more creative in the sense that it's, it's very wide open. And I think that, um, you know, Mark and Anne Kafaro and Ted Babcock and Cynthia put together this curriculum, which sort of brought in a lot of variety so, you know, I think we can almost become stagnated a little bit in coming to prayer and coming to God in the same way. And sometimes it can be hard to feel that growth or to feel like, you know, because we just come and expect sort of the same thing. So I really, I think God is creative and I think we are too. And I love that union between the two that there just may some, be something you never thought of before. Well, and I love that. Some kind of popcorn thoughts as you were talking. Um, I think even if you had a robust practice, the fact of the matter, or, or if you were stagnant or whatever, I think this past year of pandemic has upended everything. And so whatever you were doing, the world has forced you into a different way of doing and being. So I have to think that that's a value to have different prayer resources. You know, I know like right now I can't hold a thought in my head for two seconds and I keep trying to come up with words and I come up with a word that's kind of close to it, but not quite like I'm coming up with the wrong words. So maybe having a nonverbal form of prayer would be very helpful for me right now. Yeah. Um, and I, so I, I, and I'm interested in some of these different practices, because again, if we go back to the catechism, there's some interesting stuff in there. It says, what is prayer? Prayer is responding to God by thought and deeds, with or without words. And so I'd love to get your reactions to that statement. Obviously the word responding jumped out at me, thought and deeds, with or without words. So how did this program or the, this practice, engaging in this, help you live more fully into that definition of prayer? I'll go. Um, you know, I've experienced, you know, different devotionals and so on throughout my life. So maybe touching on your last question, if I've, you know, if I've been on this journey before, you know, I mean, we all need to tune up. We all need to sort of like refresh what we're doing. And so um, if you feel like you've got it wired, then uh, okay, great. Um, but again, it's, it's sort of experiencing um, something different along the the way um what was your other question oh i don't know um i mean just <laughs> thinking about the whole with or without words thought uh, and deeds yeah so i i mean the, um you know so my, i'm, I'm kind of like yeah i'm gonna get down i'm gonna read it you know i'm gonna write it and and um I really enjoyed that part of it. It was just sort of like stepping back. Of course, you know, I'm married to this contemplative, meditative, you know, teacher. And, you know, she's always telling me to slow down and just be quiet, right? And listen. And um, yeah. and so I, I found that through that 
experience that I was able to sort of slow down um, and really let the, it's not a lot, it's not a heavy scripture list. So the difference between a Bible study and this is, you know, there's a, there's a half a dozen, 10 scriptures, like, like one or two lines um, a week. Um, so it does allow you the opportunity to just sort of sit with it and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Um, and I think that's the beauty of scripture. You could read, a, you know, a, a verse, you know, today and then five years and head will have real meaning to you today. And then, you know, three weeks from now, you can read the same scripture and like, boy, I didn't even see that in there. And it just has a completely different meaning to you. So for me, it was it, it, it did allow me to just sort of slow down because it wasn't a heavy lift of scripture. It was one or two lines or one or two verses a day. And it allowed you really to just sit with it and, and read it a few times and read it in different ways, whether it be through the, you know, the African method or Lectio Divina method or, you know, and um, those sound a little bit scary, but they're just um, ways to put yourself into the scripture where it might have a different or deeper meaning than what than just reading. Yeah. So, uh, oh, so go ahead, Lauren. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was I, coming to you next anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to jump in because, um, well, I, I suppose this is in related to the question. Um, I learned a lot of different methods of praying through this program, which is actually a big reason why I joined in the first place, I did feel like my prayer life had become pretty stagnant. And I wanted that, like a refresher. And uh, through the the program, I really started delving further into a contemplative practice, which I has been speaking to me in this season of my life. But on the opposite hand, I will say, you know, I grew up um, with the Lord's Prayer. I mean, and saying it every day, I mean, praying the Lord's prayer on a daily basis to the point where I was saying words and not even focusing on them or even thinking about them. And through this program, reading the Lord's prayer now, I have just a whole new appreciation for it. And I pray it in an entirely new way. And I don't know if I would have gotten there had it not been for the Learning to Pray program. So. That's really yeah. wonderful. And I apologize and, for the ringing phone in the back. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Alexis. I'll mute. That's so beautiful. I, I am somebody who can talk all day long, and I do with my kids. I've been, I've been here with my kids, you know, all year. I know Lauren has too. And, um, I know that sometimes at the, for me, a lot of times my prayer time is at the end of the day when I'm feeling rather heavy. My mind is a million places. I'm thinking about what I've done and what I haven't done. Um, and one of the things that, that I really got out of it was in terms of that silence was to kind of learn how to let some of that go and quiet my mind that was all over the place and to let go of some of the things that I was either holding myself up for or somebody else, you know, like letting go of things with my kids, letting go of some of the things that, you know, I thought were so important um, and sort of letting God speak to me and, and letting, you know, I think also for me in this season, it's been a lot of discernment about what I'm doing with my time and, you know, where I'm heading in my life and like where our kids, you know, where we're heading as a family. And I think, Many people have shared that this year has been a time where like very normal things require a lot of extra thought, um, which can be really exhausting. But this was also a time where sometimes I would either be able to set that aside or trust that maybe I did need to give it a little bit of space and say there's something really weighing on me. And it was learning how to trust and just carve out the time. I know in my one of the groups that I'm in, somebody shared in terms of like Lenten devotions that the only reason to give something up is to make room for something else. So with this, we would ask that you set aside some time and that can actually be, for me, that's usually 
the biggest challenge as I jump on a nine week course is how is it going to fit in? What will I maybe need to move? But that's also part of the journey. A lot of people, the you know, as we sort of went, would come and say, man, I really struggled to make time for this this week. Or, oh, I, I actually really wanted to. And so I pushed that thing out of the way in favor of this because it was so nice. Um, and so that's also part of the process. I think sometimes you can see this stuff at the beginning and say, how will I have time in my day? Um, but I, that has been a huge area of growth for me is just negotiating with myself and the demands on my attention and things like that, how I'll incorporate it into my life. That's great. And, and so we're starting to get to the end of our time here. Um, and the, the, and I think we've really kind of addressed a lot of this, but I want to give you all kind of one more opportunity, you know, if there's anything we haven't noted and, or even to answer the question, what surprised you about this? We all sign up for things with certain expectations and sometimes what is a value isn't what we expected in a good sort of way. So kind of anything else or what surprised you about this? Do you wanna go, Lauren? <laughs> she has a lot. I'm, 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 I'm thinking of, um, I have to say, I didn't expect to become so invested, uh, which I mean, I don't know for, for better or worse, but um, I really felt like we mentioned earlier on, this core group of people who we meet with every week, we really lifted each other up and we prayed for each other. We had a prayer partner. And uh, it was such, uh, I feel like there was just such a feeling of community, of um, welcome, of um, inclusivity. It was just a, a, of such a supportive group. And I think that's what I missed when the program was over most, most of all, and that's why I'm glad it's being offered again. But I don't think I expected, I expected it to be, you know, learning to pray just based on the title. Well, I'm gonna come away with some new tools. I didn't expect to become so, I think, emotionally invested. Yeah, I would say building off of that, it would be, so I think I, I am just one of those people that if I hear like a, a time commitment, I think, well, that sounds kind of like a lot, you know, like what's going to be happening in nine weeks from now or nine weeks from when this is over. But I think we all agreed that it came up rather fast and that we would have kept going um, if we could have. And I think that was probably surprising to me that while wow, that nine weeks went so quickly, it took a week or two to kind of just get into the groove. And then we had a couple good, you know, we really hit our stride and got to know each other. And then, um, and maybe that's something the groups can talk about our reunions, like reunion tours. Maybe we need reunion tours um, to get these groups back together and see how one another are doing. That might be something good to think about. But, but yeah, I would just say the, that, that probably surprised me the most that nine weeks went by in a flash and I would have kept it going for longer. Yeah, I, I, um, I think that was the, uh, the biggest surprise to me. Um, I think the first meeting with your small group, um, it's a little awkward, right? You don't know everybody and, you know, you know, and so we share, you know, a little bit about who we are and, um, but I, you, you quickly sort of develop these relationships, um, and that was a piece that for me was, um, I was surprised. I mean, yeah. and um, I, um, and then it made me feel bad because I, I wanted to be together even more, right? I, I mean, I'm looking forward to the day where I can sit face to face across people that were in my group and, you know, um, engage them in a conversation. And so that's, um, that that's probably the the thing that surprised me the most uh, that I didn't anticipate getting out of the program that clearly um, was pretty close to the top of the list of pluses. 
Yeah. That's always my thing. Um, you know, I think the best ministry is always at heart relational. That's the bottom yeah. line. So thank you so much for this. Um, certainly if people have any questions, these are three folks that you could be in touch with. And thank you again for your time. And again, I can't wait till we can all be together too. So peace and love all. Thank you. Thank you.